I am Claudia Tornquist, President and CEO of Kodiak Copper. Kodiak is an exploration company focused on copper porphyries in North America. Our main project is a project called MPD in southern British Columbia, where we made a high-grade discovery and have since followed it up with numerous drill meters and significantly grown the project. Claudia, welcome. Who's that guy? <laughs> Nobody knows him. No one knows. Just, just turned up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Chris, welcome. Welcome. Yeah. Good to see you again. Yeah, good to see you again. Yeah. So, that you're, you, you used to sort of be localish, but you, you've, you've moved, to, moved away, but you're still associated with mining. You're involved yep. with Kodak Huffman for some time. Yep. Uh, what's your connection with it? Uh, I'm the guy that found the MPD project for the mm -hmm. company, uh, so uh, I've worked in that area for years. I used to work for a copper producer called Imperial Metals, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm the chairman of the company. So I've been involved now for several years with Kodiak. Right, but you were busy. Oh yeah, you were little, bearish elsewhere. A little bit <laughs> tied up, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. But the, the matters have concluded. Um, what are you going to be doing now? How can you help Kodiak? Uh, well, this project that Kodiak has in it is uh, one that I like based on the geology. That mm. belt of rocks, the Quinell terrain, is one that I've uh, been involved in putting a mine into production in previously. Uh, so I know it quite well. And what I help do is basically look at the targets and help prioritize where the company should be drilling. So I help out on the geological side. I did get my career started in porphyry copper gold. Okay, okay. Now, if I look at the market at the moment, junior space is kind of beaten up. You did a, what, a 1.8 billion type of trans, something like that. Some disgusting, filthy number like Thank that. you. Thank you. <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> so, it, 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 it was a great, great success. But, uh, you know, for companies down at the other end of the scale at mm -hmm. the moment, we're going we're gonna to put you in this, we're going to put you in, this, in, mm -hmm. in, in that part of the, 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 the arena. Um, is, it's, it's hard market at the moment, right? Mm -hmm. Copper, we all love copper. It's great, we're the right commodity. But money's hard to come by. It's expensive when you do. It's dilutive and all the rest of those things. So, and, and it's kind of risk off market still. Mm -hmm. um, one hopes the copper comes back, but for a, comp for a company like this, you've got to be really, really um, you know, efficient with capital spend, right? Mm -hmm. Every dollar counts, every yeah. meter counts. Mm -hmm. um, you guys knocked it out of the park, straight out of the gate, made a nice you know, high grade discovery. People got excited, market got discovery. Mm -hmm. But since then it's been kind of, hasn't sort of hit those dizzy heights. So how do, you, how do you react to that? Do you think that's fair to say? Well, our um, share price and sort of the market reaction, I think it's quite typical. We had the initial high grade discovery, mm. big rally in our share price, and then some consolidation. Mm. And after that, our share price held up really well. We had successful drill results, more high grade, really extended the gate zone, our initial discovery, mm -hmm. and had much technical success. But then in yeah, sort of 2022, when the general market um, started declining, we saw our share price decline just like everybody else. And yeah, it's been a very, very weak market ever since. And our share price is low, obviously very frustrating for me, for us, as management um, from an investor's perspective it's a time to buy but i think fundamentally we are in a good place because we were able to finance at good prices time did well we're able last year in 2023 when ma where many juniors laid low we were able to execute a big drill program so we've really advanced the project have project have results to show and that'll serve as well and really get us um, in a good position as and when the market turns, and it will turn. Okay, well, the, the two things I want to deal with today, right, is data analysis, mm -hmm. which you've got a little announcement on here, about how you assess, you know, well, drill programs and targeting and all, all those important things, because you've got to be efficient, right? I think that's important, and if we can sort of understand what you're doing in, in, in that area. And the second thing is, what's the plan here? Why is this still worth spending money on, right? So I'd like to talk about, let's, let's talk about the AI component. That, that sounds mm -hmm. a little bit exciting. Tell us about it. Yep. Well, we've just started working with Verify AI mm -hmm. and their AI software for drill targeting. 
and have some very encouraging initial results. We're very excited about it. Essentially, what um, this um, is about is you take all your project data into a, a big AI engine software pack. Mm -hmm. They chew through it, and just like a human geologist would do, find patterns, anomalies, correlations, mm -hmm. and spit out a number of targets. Right. We were in the case of MPD, in a good situation because yeah. we know already where mineralization is from our drilling. Yeah. So we were able to see whether where the um, software told us there would be a high probability of mineralization, whether that's where we hit. Yeah. And we were really quite impressed with the results. The uh, system confirmed the mineralization where we found it, confirmed some of our targets that we had already, and generated a whole lot of new ones which we now, our geologists, yeah. look at and prioritize and look at why is this a target and yeah. can they confirm the target. And I think um, AI will make a huge difference in the exploration because it just helps generating, prioritizing targets mm. much better than humans could and it will accelerate exploration, it will lower costs because mm -hmm. you have a much higher chance of hitting the right stuff if you have all the targets at once, can prioritize them. Okay. So I really think that will be a game changer and I'm proud to be early on in the game okay, and awesome. applying this, this software. So verify AI, so you verify, yeah. verify, that's mm -hmm. good. Um, they, have they got all of your data now in, the, in their system? Have they processed it? Or is it, are you starting a process with them? I know you verified them. It's, well, you never have all of the data in exploration because the data gets generated as you go. And sure, um, sure. so it's a continuing process and we will be working with right. this. So you, you're going program. saying, right, we're going to go, we validated it as much as we can. Mm -hmm. it's, it's had some good hits, some good responses. We're going to back this. You're going to back this with dollars, right? Mm -hmm. The drill campaign is going to be better. Um, one hundred percent off of whatever Verify AI tells you is that right? Validated by humans, presumably. Well, at the end of the day, it's our geological team, Chris, and our VPs, our senior geologists, who decide which are the most prospective targets. Right. Um, AI supports it and accelerates it and enhances the work that right. our team does. And then there's 100% around drilling, because you've still got to come up with a plan, right, Chris, that you, oh, know, yeah. you need? Definitely. Because like, you, you kind of famously sort of, you know, didn't really kind of jump on, well, we need to do economic studies. And so we're going to drill, yep. we're going to create a lot of data. Yep. Someone else can come in and put that into their own process, which won't necessarily be an AI process, but and they will work out how to mine this thing, right? Yep. And I think that's where junior companies need to kind of lead a little bit and show retail investors. I know you've got a bunch of you know, big high net worths in there. Um, you've got to show them how the, why this thing will be a success in the future. Otherwise, it's just putting more dollars in the ground, yeah. which so many juniors you know, destroy value doing without actually getting yeah, that's an end right. product. So how do we get an end product which we can value? Yeah. So we want to make sure, uh, one of the issues that junior companies have right now, and this is more of a systemic issue, and it's not anything related in particular to Kodiak, but mm -hmm. um, if you look at exploration now compared to 30 or 40 years ago, mm -hmm. if you raise, say, $10, right, and you spend it on a project, yeah. uh, back, back in the day, we'll just use a euphemism here, uh, maybe eight of those $10 would be spent on exploration, but there's right. more of an administrative burden within companies right now. Mm -hmm. So you wanna make sure you're giving tools to your geologists that let them actually do geology. And one of the ways that AI is useful is it's like having another staff member, but that mm -hmm. staff member just does geology, or they just do science. Mm -hmm. And this is a tool that you can unlock that everybody then in the time that they have available for this type of work is optimizing that time. And what that means over the long term is that more dollars that get spent, get spent on actual geological interpretation and vectoring. The, the issue, that a company like Kodiak has is with a big project like MPD mm -hmm. is there's lots of targets on it, right? So lots of porphyries. We know porphyries are big and they take drill meters and dollars to spend. What we want to make sure is that the money that's being spent is being spent efficiently. You mentioned that at the beginning. Claudia has mentioned that as well. It's really what it comes down to is narrowing down where those drills are going to go so that you get more bang for your buck, right? Right. Um, for, for, for sure. And, but I think, I think the... The th again, it comes back to this, the, where the market's at, right? It's also going to inform party. It's great having AI supporting you, 
But if the market's not supporting you, your decision making is, is going to get affected by that. Probably because of access to capital, cheap capital, the timing of that capital, etc. So I come, I come back to the same, the same question, sort of, which is the AI bit takes care of the, the where, right? You've got to work out the when and the how with, with yeah. the dollars, right? Yeah. Because everyone's in the same boat, I get it, it's, it's not a Kodiak thing, everyone's in the same boat here, mm -hmm. but you've got to say, we are one of the better bets. We think we've got something big here, mm -hmm. we've got to show you that the economics will, will be here. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that requires an economic study, Chris. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> only only <laughs> if it requires know. it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've learned many yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. yeah. um, is, you know, but for, for, for mere mortals, we, we kind of like to look at, you know, how does this thing actually get built out? So I, I guess the question to e either of you, I don't know who answers it, is how do you stand out from the crowd? Because there's lots of people saying the same thing and the same boat. I think what I referred to before, um, that at this time, that we were able to progress our project through the downturn, mm -hmm. that at this point sets us apart because yeah. many were not. Yeah. Also the fact that we have still money in the treasury mm -hmm. and do not have to finance in a poor market and dilute our shareholders, that's also a big bonus. And mm -hmm. if I was an investor, that's certainly something I would look for in a company. Mm -hmm. So I think even though the market is poor, we are in a good Good place and are well positioned to, to benefit when it turns. Right, but you, which is great, and you're right, is you've mm -hmm. got to advance the story along. But you know, grade comes into it, and we talked about it last mm -hmm. time out. But I think for new people looking in here is, how, and this might be more for you actually. Sure. When you're looking uh, yeah. in as an outside yeah. investor, and you know, you, you know, you're going to be looking at projects around and say, from a slightly different perspective and a slightly more technical yeah. perspective than yeah. most, right? And you're looking at a project like this and go, look, we've 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 been drilling out and we're seeing mineralization across the board. Yep. But to most, they go, well, the, the grade's down at the lower end of, of the threshold for me. I'm yes, not it is sure in BC. Yeah, exactly. Right, yeah. right. But you would say, that's not a problem because why? This is interesting because we'll drill a kilometer long hole and yeah. the overall grade in the hole is relatively low like it is in most porphyries in BC. But we'll see time and again, we'll have high grade sections within it. So we've had drill holes that com have come out recently like the west zone drilling, the gate zone drilling. And you'll see that up near surface in something like the west zone, you're actually looking at grades that are comparable to higher grade porphyry deposits. But I think the market uh, needs to understand that we're looking in some areas for big, uh, deeper targets like the gate zone uh, that might be amenable to potentially underground type bulk mining scenarios and near surface copper mining as well. And these inherently have two different grades patterns, right? So, you know, but the good thing is with the drilling that we're doing, we're seeing within, say you take a five square kilometer copper and soil anomaly, and then you drill it and you find copper in all those areas. Now you've got a five square kilometer porphyry that you're dealing with. We want to know the areas that are within that that have the better grades because that's what drives economics, right, over the long term. You've got to start mining in a place that pays back your costs quickly. And that's what the work that we're doing now. So we've seen that now in the west zone, we've seen it in the gate zone, and the AI element that Claudia is talking about helps us vector within a really big uh, porphyry system that's mineralized everywhere into the parts of it that we think are going to drive economics. Okay, so this, is, this isn't the case of putting good money after bad or having to do something radical to kind of change the story. You, as far as yeah. you're concerned, this story hangs together well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I've, I've worked uh, in BC. I've worked at two copper porphyry mines. One of them is Red Chris mm -hmm. and the other one was Mount Polly. Mm -hmm. And both of these deposits are in the 0.2 to 0.3 range. Right? So we know that these are making money for the operators. We know Newcrest ended up being the owner of Red Chris and uh, that got bought by Newmont recently. And it's a great operation. Right, So you're not looking at grades that stand out from a global perspective, but you're looking at stuff we know makes money in a BC jurisdiction. Right. Right? So it's uh, how you communicate that to investors, which Claudia always has the, uh, the burden of having those conversations. But from my perspective, as a geologist that have worked in these deposits and seen them mining actively, uh, they're great. Right. So okay. HUD Bay recently did the acquisition of mm -hmm. Copper Mountain, which is near our project. Mm -hmm. Definitely not high grade, but definitely an asset that they were looking for. Mm -hmm. right. So part of the prop process that we've got to do with Kodiak is, you know, if, you, if you're in our shoes and, uh, you know, I've been here with Great Bears, we have all these discussions with various producers. We get the same message from the production, uh, the copper producers all the time with Kodiak, and that's, we love what you're seeing, just keep finding more. 
So sometimes that's a different message than what a retail investor would like to see is just give us a study right now. Mm -hmm. But if you're a major producer, you just want to see critical mass and volume, right? Yeah. So they know that it can work. They just need enough material. So, so you're not kind of burdened, and maybe it's the wrong word, but you're not burdened with having to work out, well, how do we think this mine might actually look at some point? That's someone else's problem for you down the line, right? Keep finding more is the message I've just heard. Mm -hmm. That work for you? Yep. <laughs> if you if you look around the world, yeah. um, the people who build and run porphyry mines are mm. big companies. Mm. I don't think there is a single one that is being built or is being run by the junior who discovered, discovered it. Yeah. So I think our mission is really to generate value at the drill bit, right. and at some point, someone much bigger than we are will get interested right. and then snap us up. Okay, so with, with this, it's a real simple message. It's drill, 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 and with the, with the aid of AI, um, with Verify's AI product uh, and service, um, you will hopefully be doing it more efficiently. Can you give us a sense of the timing of that, you know, and how much you're allocating to that, dollar terms or meter terms? We are, well, at this, I'm not sure I understand your question. How much money are you going to spend drilling this year? How much <laughs> money is this? <laughs> it sounded like you're asking how much are we paying for AI. Yeah, not um, much on the AI side. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yes. Great question. We are, we are um, at the moment um, yeah. planning our drilling right. program, having a look at all the targets, prioritizing, etc. Typically, we drill, start drilling in the spring, sort of April time, and then drill okay. until November. Okay. Um, so we haven't made that decision yet, and we are flexible. And this, this uh, flexibility also um, is, one is timing-wise, we can start earlier or later. Mm -hmm. So if the market really doesn't come back, then we can always decide to just delay a little bit. Yeah. We can make the program big, or we can make it slightly more conservative. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, we'll make that dependent on, on what the market looks like. Good, good, good. Well, we look forward to keep hearing all about mm -hmm. it. So well done on, on that slightly Technology, great thing. I, I love it. I think it's going to I'll be unemployed soon. Uh, we're all going to be unemployed. <laughs> well, well done, AI mining. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah.